G'day and welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're getting back on the Morris Minor and we have a shit list of things to get done. All right, so welcome back everyone. We have an absolute list of things we're gonna get done on the Morris Minor today. So a couple of things that we need to do is we need to remove all the wheels. We need to remove the rear axle, so the entire rear differential assembly. We need to inspect the brakes, both front and rear. We need to see what we need in terms of suspension and steering, as well as any driveline components in which we're gonna be upgrading. So we're gonna send the diff away, we're gonna get a refurbished one, which then means we need to change the wheels. So then we need to change front hubs to be able to make it work. But then in change the front hubs, we also need new wheels. So it is a couple of things that we need to get addressed, but I'm gonna to chat to the customer this week and then determine what it is that we need to change exactly and what wheels he wants to go with. As anyone knows, a set of wheels will either make or break a car. Set of new tires on anything looks amazing, but putting the right wheels on it is definitely a really hard decision. So let's put a set of gloves on, let's get to work. All right, so I've spoken about gloves many, many times before. It is a really good, cheap investment to take care of your hands, especially when you're working with grease and oil, especially any sort of solvents like fuel. So it also enables you that when you get dirty, rip them off, throw them over your right shoulder, put them straight in the bin, done, see you later. All right, so let's get into draining the rear diff oil. Hopefully there's some in there. Fingers crossed it's not in really bad condition, but I suppose if it is, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, we remove the rear wheels, and the axle stands are currently underneath the rear diff itself. So what we need to do here is reposition them so that way they're not holding up the differential assembly at all. But like I said, let's drain the rear diff oil and we'll go from there. Alright, so, right, so as you can see, this is the drain plug here. We're using a shifter to be able to loosen it because I don't have the proper bit. So it should be okay, so long as I can get the right size on there. Now, a really good Tomo's tech tip here is that whenever you go to drain something like a diff or an engine oil, always make sure that you can release the fill point first before draining the oil. The reason for that is, is if it is seized and you can't get it out and you drain the engine oil or the diff oil, gearbox, transfer case, whatever it is, out of the vehicle and you can't put it back in, you're up the creek. Now, because we have the drain plug out at the moment and the fill plug is still in, it is gonna go like this for quite some time. So it's not going to impair it at all. All right, so next thing is to remove the wheels. We're then going to remove the U-bolts. Once we've undone those, we can then reposition the jack stands and then take the differential out. All right, so before we go to removing the hubcap around here, we're just gonna check any movement in the tail shaft at all. So left and right, up and down, give it a spin. Doesn't seem too bad. You can actually see here, the rim is actually buckled as well. So it's not completely circular all the way around. So it's a good thing that we're changing those. Now to get the hub cap off, I'm just gonna get a screwdriver in here and just pry it off. That way we're not gonna damage the chrome cap. All right, change of plan. I'm gonna use a small pry bar. Oh, there we go, off she comes. All right, so now we need to work out what size the wheel nuts are as well. I'm sure they're probably gonna be Imperial. All right, from a little box of tools, Let's just go through, see if we can get this right. Um, I'm gonna go three quarter. Well, pretty close, should be fine. Now we might even need to use new wheel nuts depending if it's the same thread as well on the new uh, axle. Now remember as well, it's not held on by any studs. They're actually bolts and they locate as well with a tapered edge on the nut. So that needs to come straight off. I'm gonna stick that wheel to the side, then we can work on doing the other side. Now that one was actually quite concerning because it came out with a bit of force, but because it's not gonna be our issue, I just hope that the threads aren't damaged too much. But in saying that, you can just get a new drum and that'll upgrade it and fix a problem of any stud or thread issues you have inside there. Now, I often talk about spark plugs and them telling a story about the internals of the engine. 
Let us have a look at that. Look, it doesn't look too bad considering. It does smell heavily like diff oil, but also there isn't a great amount of oil in there. There's probably only a couple hundred mils, I reckon. Probably not even a litre. So looking at engine oil, viscosity, all that sort of stuff, those are the sort of things that you want to look at when you're pulling stuff apart, because then it will give you a good indication as to whether it's been serviced properly, whether there's any internal issues going on, if there's metal inside there, any sort of damage that could have occurred. And most importantly, has it been serviced regularly or gone underwater? All right, so next thing we need to do is reposition the jack stands because at the moment they're currently holding up the rear diff. So what we're gonna do is just grab a rubber block and we're gonna stick it directly up under here. You could even just go under the rear hanger of the uh, leaf spring, but then you run the risk as well that it's gonna damage and possibly even fall off. So there's a greater surface area here. Seems somewhat sort of firm, but having a bigger block there is gonna give a greater surface area. So let's reposition the stands, move them, and then work on getting it out. Alright, so a bit of overkill. I'm actually using the rubber block that I've got on Grace at the moment because I've got the engine out of it. So what I'm going to do is just raise these jack stands as high as they'll go and put this bit of timber underneath there. Yeah, here's a bit of overkill having that there, but it'll still do the same job. So this one's going to be a little bit tighter. Man, how ridiculous is this exhaust, honestly? Stick it up through there. All right, so nice and easy. Oh, there we go. That should be holding it, yep. Right, I might just get a pry bar in there. I'd say it's probably just caught on the lip of it. It's just, ah, there we go, cool. That's out of there. Next thing we need to do is remove the rear shock absorber mounts. So these up here, I'll grab the camera so you can see. All right, so. Next thing we need to do is remove the sway bar link, I guess you'd call it, or the rear shock link. It's this one here, it's got a fair amount of movement in there. So those are gonna need replacing. This thing's gonna go so much better having better suspension in there. We'll see if there's any shackle bushes as well we can get while we're here. That way it'll just help the overall ride comfort and stability. Now, we're gonna undo these. So we're gonna undo the nut on the back side, you can either do it there or you can do it at the top, doesn't really matter. But probably undoing it from here should be all right. Then we're gonna undo the U-bolt, so these just up under here. Now that was a bit of a concern. The fact that it wasn't tight at all really worries me. All right, let's have a look. So see how that didn't return? That should, I would imagine, return. Anyway, let's check the other side and have a look, but maybe someone in the comments section can let me know. But this link here, that's completely cactus. Yeah, it's completely worn. That boot down here is just gone completely. So let's get the other side out and then have a look at what we need to do to remove these U-bolts just down under here. Give that a bit of a wiggle. Hopefully be able to get that out of there. All right, so I gave it a couple of good hits with a hammer just here. That's loosened it up and now it's pulled it out. Let's have a feel of this. So being a shock absorber, I'd imagine it should have some sort of spring back to it. There's a bit of resistance, but given we've gone this far with them, we might as well change them. And also, there is movement there as well, laterally and in the rotation. All right, next thing is the handbrake cable. So just bend these around here. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll come out first go. Now I find using a pair of side cutters works best for this. You generally get the best sort of grip on them. If not, you can just cut it and then pull them straight out. And you also give it a bit of a twist as well to help the removal process. That'll go straight in the bin. That pin should just pull out as long as it's not rusted in there. 
Nope. That's great. Ugh. Spoke too soon. I'll right, pull it out. Cool, that's done. Now, we'll do the same on the other side. But this one looks like it's seen better days, that's for sure. So, oh, good news is it rotates. See if we get the split pin out first go. Or if it's gonna wanna break. Oh, not too bad. Almost got it all the way out. All right, that's out. Now, hopefully, push that pin all the way through, which uh, I reckon that's gonna be an absolute pain to get out now. 100%. I'm just going to try and put the pliers in behind it at the back. Try and get some gap there. Oh, what do you know? It actually worked. I'm just going to try and wiggle it out using the side cutters and just wiggling it side to side. Hopefully that will be enough to be able to get it all the way out. Yeah, it's definitely coming. It's just slow, slow process. There we go. Yeah, you could probably use a little bit of rust off or WD-40 or something on here to help get it out, but I was pretty successful in removing it to start off with, so I didn't really see the need. All right, we're definitely gonna get new pins. That thing looks like it's been at the bottom of the ocean. All right, next thing here is going to be removing this main pipe here. So this is the one that goes into the differential itself. So we're probably gonna take this off. We'll probably end up getting new pipes made up. The one that comes out here to the driver's side, this one goes to the passenger side, and definitely, definitely replacing the rubber hose there. Now, if you have a look up here, let's just get a little bit of a closer inspection. I'll just grab the camera and the light so you can actually see. Look at this. This thing's pretty damp. Now because it's damp, so there we go, hang on, I'll bring it up here so you can see. Now see how that thing is damp? That thing is no good, she's cactus. So we need to take off the nut on the furthermost side. And then once we've done that, we can then let the brake fluid drain out. So we're just gonna get a drain tin underneath there. Drain all the brake fluid out. We're gonna take this pipe off from up here. Take it off from there and then take the whole rear assembly out as one and that should just enable it to be removed without too much dilemma or drama. All right, so this thing does have a fairly small brake fluid reservoir. So hopefully, given the condition of this car, there's not a lot of brake fluid in there. But either way, we need to re-bleed it. Ugh. I love it when stuff is so damn tight. You loosen it and think, yeah, we're actually getting somewhere. And then you can't because it's so damn freaking tight. Yeah, for what it's worth, I won't just replace the rear differential pipes. I'll also replace all of the steel pipes in the car. If we're going to this extent, you might as well. Like you just don't know the condition of what they're like internally. Sometimes you can get them where they have a very small pinhole leak in the pipe. And you just don't know because it can rust from the inside, especially if it hasn't been serviced or maintained. Now, I actually just resulted in getting a pair of combination pliers to help speed up the process because 7 16 spanner I was using was good but because the edges are slightly rusted it doesn't fit on there 100% every single time so hopefully this will enable it to come out quicker just about loose now there we go Ugh. Well, the fact that no brake fluid came out is a very, very big concern. Now, we need to re remove this nut on the back side here, holding this one, and then the whole thing will come straight out. That's probably gonna be an absolute pain now because it's rusted the entire way on. Now it's also worthwhile noting that it'll have a spring washer on the side where the nut is on the pipe. So you'll see it in just a second. Got the nut, spring washer, and that needs to stick with there. That is super concerning. Not even a drip has come out of that rear brake line. Oh, there we go. Wow, that is very, very concerning. And not to mention, most importantly, dangerous. All right, so grab yourself five eighths socket. Whip off the nuts that hold these on. Now, it's worthwhile noting as well that it's not very common in modern day cars anyway, that the U-bolts are held in by a lock nut. So this one here, 
Uh, in this case, it is. Must just help prevent it, come undone. But like I said, it's best to replace them when you take them out, especially given the age of the vehicle. All right, once all the nuts are off and any washers, we can then remove the U-bolts. It feels like there's one there and there's one there as well, but nothing a hammer won't fix. So I'm just gonna be gentle pushing these just in case we need to reuse them. All right, that's the bump stop. So we're gonna replace that. That thing's pretty well aged and cracked. And you can see there is a fair amount of rust on the inside there. Not that it's gonna affect the inside of it. So they're the U-bolts. The reason they call them user bolt is because it is shaped like the letter U. So that should be completely free now, yep. Now we can do the same to the other side. While we're here, we just need to make sure we pull out that handbrake cable as well. That should just pull out of there. Uh, there's actually a nut on the inside here, which you probably can't see. So just where my finger is, probably just a half inch nut. Undo that, then the entire thing will just lift up off that bracket. Right, it turns out I was completely wrong with the sizing. It is a 7 16 nut, just down up under there. Move the nut to the side, pull that cable out, stick the nut back on there, that way you're not gonna lose it. And do the same the other side. All right, now everything's loose. It is worthwhile noting that once it's free, the bottom of the diff does have a hole in it. So this one just here, it has a locator just at the top. That enables it to locate onto the springs. If it's not, you're gonna find that the rear alignment of the differential is gonna be out. So I've just moved it off to one side. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, then we should be able to push it one way, lift it over, bring it down, and slide it straight out. All right, lift one side up. Ever so gently lower it down. Do the same to the other side and slide it this way. And that is the rear diff removal on a Morris Minor. We're pretty much going to be throwing this thing almost in the bin. Well, not really. I'm going to give it to one of the guys who I'm buying some parts off. Simply because if this can go to someone else, the use of something else that they need, whether it be a rebuild or refurbishment, they might need parts of it. Hell, they might even need it for scrap metal. Whatever it is, I have no use for it. So I'd much prefer to give it to someone who can purpose it to a good home. All right, so now that we've got the rear diff out, it's time to jump on the front. Let's pull the front wheels off and have a look at the front suspension setup and see what we need to do to change anything, to make any modifications, especially if we need to upgrade components like those rear shocks on this thing. All right, let's check out this front suspension. So left and right isn't too bad. There is a bit of movement. The left rack end, so you might as well do a rack end and a tie rod at the same time, up and down. Yeah, there's definitely wheel bearing movement there. Really good way to know, like I've shown you before, is move it up and down. If you see any ball joints moving and the wheel staying still, chances are it's a ball joint. If the wheel is moving but nothing else, chances are it's the wheel bearing. So same thing again. Make the biggest amount of noise you can. Remove these. Now, an option that I've been chatting about with the customer is to upgrade the brakes. So the reason why I want to upgrade the brakes is for many reasons. One, you could do a disc brake conversion, but then it's going to throw the offset out of the front wheels, which then means it's going to be outside the guard, which then means you increase the track by over 25 mil, which then means it makes it illegal and it just snowballs on from there. So you really got to get these modifications. You can customize vehicles. You can put 35s on a, a standard Hyundai XL, for instance, but you need to have it engineered. You can't engineer track width, not here in Australia. So if you can do it overseas, please let me know in the comments section below. Now let's have a look at this front suspension and get a bit of an idea as to what's going on. Like any good four wheel drive or even classic car they always come out with grease nipples so i'm really glad to see there's a grease nipple there there's grease coming out of there this one's been done at some stage these upper bushes are completely cracked and shagged so we're gonna have to replace those bushes now something that's really concerning got three bolts that come through here one of them isn't even tightened up that is completely loose this one oh my gosh that washer is loose and then this one here, that's probably the only tight one there. So we're going to have to replace that bump stop mount. Now that arm, we need to take that off so we can have a look to see if it's worn. Uh, the spindle down here attaches that. That seems to be okay. 
So we'll probably have a look at this bit here, see if there's any components in there we can replace, if we can just do as a whole unit, which might be an easier option to do. Now, uh, the brakes, like I was saying before, you can replace them with disc brakes, but it's gonna throw the track offset out, which means, like I was saying, it's gonna bring the wheel further out into the guard, which then means it's gonna be outside the guard with the wheels, etc., etc. rolls on like I was talking before. Now, these are standard seven inches. You can get eight inch, so it's not only taller, so half or one inch taller, but it's also half an inch wider. The reason for that is it gives you more braking surface. So that's gonna be a much better option for us to do. Now, let's just have a look down under here. I'll grab one of my torches and we can go down there and have a look. Now, doesn't look too bad here. If we can rebuild that spindle, that would be absolutely perfect. Those front, uh, brake pipes, that whole brake assembly, we're going to throw that in the bin. Uh, that brake pipe there, that rubber one, and even that steel line there as well, we're going to get rid of that. The old torsion bar suspension, all the way through to here, see if we can replace that. If not, we can just leave it. Now, one thing I did notice, it did, did came out with an aerial. Looks like it's an electric one, so it goes up and down. I'll just move that torch out of the way, there we go. Cool, has a wire running down through there, but the most interesting thing is, the car does not have a radio at all. So it might be something as well that we might look into upgrading. We can get a radio for us. Now, speaking of radios, there will be an episode coming up soon uh, of a classic radio upgrade that I got sent to me by a company called The Sound Labs Group. So stay tuned for that if I haven't already listed it in a link in the description above. All right, so I thought I'd just show you guys how much movement's in this thing. That's one hand up and down side to side it's clanking around not overly good but yeah this front wheel literally feels like it's about to fall off so let's just go behind i'll show you guys quickly before we wrap up the episode all right so you can see here left and right it's got movement that is from the rack end and tyrant end so we're going to replace both those but this one here it's up and down so like i was saying whereas if you move it up and down the wheel is moving but the hub is staying still which means that the wheel bearing is cactus all right essentially the same thing again that front left upper shock mount is completely deteriorated which is frustrating oh sorry just trying to get the light in there uh the spindle mounts yeah they're cactus that's the new exhaust which we're obviously going to be upgrading compared to that old rickety thing <laughs> look at that that's disgusting uh, that brake line as well, that looks fairly original, doesn't look like it's been changed. Anything up in there? Yeah, that mount as well. If you look on the other side quickly. The old bump stop on the driver's side is missing a bolt. So that's actually chewed away. It looks like a bloody rat's been chewing out. Not that it has, but we're going to have to replace those. Otherwise, it's going to cause issues as well so that's a bump stop that's what limits the travel and prevents it bottoming out if not this spindle just here where the torch is would smash up against the guard and send it straight through into there well everyone that's it for this episode we've done a heap on the Morris Miner today. I'm heading down south to go grab a heap of parts for it this weekend. So everything we've taken out, the sub axles, the brakes, the rear diff, brake lines, you name it, we are changing it on this car. It's not only refurbishing the vehicle, but it's also making the drivability and the quality of the vehicle significantly better to what it currently is. So the stopping power is gonna be amazing. The new set of wheels we've got coming for it as well. The differential is just gonna complement absolutely everything. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode i hope that i'm doing all right on the morris minor if you guys want to see more of this please let me know in the comment section below but we are not even halfway yet through this build i have some really ex interesting and exciting things coming up for it in the near future so guys like always stay covid safe thanks for watching australia's best classic morris minor youtube channel just kidding you can take offense to that if you want you can actually like the comments or you could just tell me how much of an idiot i am Either way, enjoy. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on another episode of Thomas Tune-Ups.